Hey, 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 welcome to a new episode of Nate's MMA Corner. I'm Nate, and if you watch my show, you're in my corner. Today's episode is a pre-fight show for UFC Fight Night, Brunson versus Machida. Machida versus Brunson, however you want to say it. Um, this is a pretty stacked Brazilian card taking place in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And uh, I am excited for the main event. I think... Um, it's going to be a big test to see if Machida's back on track after a long layoff due to the uh, drug test results in, in his past. Um, and Derek Brunson, can he hack it in a main event against a top star and uh, not uh, let it get to him like uh, the Anderson Silva fight? Uh, I felt like he held back in the Anderson Silva fight, and he could have won that fight. Uh, Derek Brunson has all the potential in the world. He just needs to uh, believe in it and let it go. Um, yeah, so this is a pre-fight rundown of the main card, and let's get started. So, the main event is a middleweight clash with Derek Brunson versus Lyoto the Dragon Machida. Lyoto the Dragon Machida, former UFC light heavyweight champ, uh, famous for knocking out Rashad Evans in dramatic fashion. Derek Brunson, uh, he's in recent times been a knockout artist. But um, he had that big loss to Anderson Silva, and that kind of held him back in the division. And uh, had he won that, he definitely would be in title mix. So we're really seeing two top guys here in the middleweight division duke it out. And uh, I am picking Machida fourth round uh, knockout. I think uh, Machida is going to be running around being real elusive, and then Derek Brunson's going to get tired, and then. Um, trying to chase down Machida, and Machida's going to, um, yeah, knock him out late in, in the fight. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to see uh, a lot of uh, Machida's old-school karate style, where he keeps um, a, a kind of a, a wide stance, and um, he distanced himself uh, pretty much, pretty well uh, from Derek Brunson. And Brunson's going to be uh, wearing out energy, trying to chase him down. And then Machida is this, uh, he's going to pop him at some point, I think. And um, yeah, Machida, he's, people, I think, forgot about him over time because he had such a long layoff, but he's back. And with a big win in this fight, he definitely will be back uh, with a bang. Um, Lyoto Machida is uh, one of those fighters where he could be really exciting or really boring. And I think this fight's going to be boring at first, and then there's going to be some big knockout, and it's going to make it really exciting at the tail end of it. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be interesting how this fight plays out, because I could be right, or I could be completely wrong, and it's boring, or in that rare chance, it's exciting from the first second to the last minute, you know. Anyhow, I'm picking Lyoto Machida, uh, fourth round knockout. Then in the welterweight division, we have Damian Maya versus Colby Covington. Colby Covington has a high caliber wrestling background. Uh, his striking's pretty good. His jiu-jitsu's not too bad. Uh, Damian Maya, I think, is just going to be looking to grapple with them. And we're going to see Colby Covington um, trying to avoid the ground game altogether and shaking Damian Maya off as much as he can and then him running around. I think it could turn into shades of the Tyrone Woodley Damian Maya title fight. However, uh, Colby Covington, I don't know if he's on par with um, a Tyrone Woodley, uh, where Woodley was able to shake him off time after time after time. I think um, Damian Maya will eventually uh, get him to the ground and submit him, and I think it's going to happen late in round two. I think it's going to take some time, but I think Damian Maya is going to get it done and get that submission win and avoid striking at all costs with Colby Covington. Uh, even though I, I feel like Damian Maya should really use the strikes to set up the takedowns and go for the submissions, I don't think he's going to do that. I think he's going to keep going for the takedowns, uh, single leg. Uh, he's going to keep shoot for keep shooting for that single leg. And, yeah, Damian Maya will eventually get it. And all he needs to get it is once against a guy like Colby Covington. Colby Covington is, I think, one of the future prospects in the Walter Reed division. I mean, well, he already is a top prospect in the Walter Wade division. But um, I think uh, Colby Covington, he loses this fight and bounces back with two, three more wins after the fact. Um, 
and we're going to definitely see more Colby, Colby Covington win or lose in this fight. He has a lot more to offer in this welterweight division, win or lose in this fight. So it's going to be exciting to see if Maya gets back in title mix or Colby Covington really makes a statement and becomes a title challenger. Uh, then, um, so I'm picking, yeah, Maya, second round submission. Then in the Bantamweight division, we have Pedro Munoz versus Rob Font. I am picking uh, Rob Font by decision. I think this fight stays standing, and uh, Rob Font wins on points due to strikes. Then in the lightweight division, we have Francisco Trinaldo versus Jim Miller. I've picked against uh, Trinaldo too many times in the past and got, got it wrong too many times. Um, I'm not going to make that mistake again. I'm picking Trinaldo's second round knockout. I think Jim Miller is a talented veteran, uh, one of the longest lasting uh, fighters in UFC history. He's had so many fights. and um, But I think Francisco Trinaldo gets um, a knockout win here. I think his hands are pretty heavy for a lightweight and gets it done, especially he feeds off that hometown crowd and gets it done second round knockout. Then in the middleweight division, we have uh, Tiago Santos versus Jack Hermanson. And I'm picking, um, I want Jack to win, or Jock, however you want to say it. He's uh, a Nordic uh, prospect in the UFC, so you know I, I got to like him. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm picking uh, Tiago Santos, uh, first round knockout. I think he has heavy hands and he can get it done on the feet and avoid uh, a ground attack from uh, Jack. Then, um, yes, yeah, so I'm picking first round knockout uh, Santos. Then in the Bantamweight division, to kick off the main card, we have John Lineker versus Marlon Vera. Now this one I kind of went back and forth because John Lineker's notorious for missing weight and being unprofessional in that regard. Marlon Vera shows up to fight. Uh, however, I picked John Lineker in this because Marlon Vera, yes, he did beat Brad Pickett, but I do feel like um, Brad Pickett uh, was going to win that fight until he got caught in that third and final round. I believe it was. Then um, I think uh, John Lineker could watch that fight, and he probably did with his training camp, and saw... Um, the mistakes that uh, Lineker or um, Pickett made, and um, I think uh, Lineker learns from it, and hopefully John Lineker makes weight and shows up to fight. And I think uh, John Lineker, on his best day, will win this fight. On his worst day, could lose a decision in this fight. Um, but yeah, I'm picking uh, John Lineker uh, first round knockout. He has heavy hands for band and weight, and I think he gets it done here in some sort of flashy knockout uh, with uh, his punching power. So there you have it. There's my uh, pre-fight predictions on this amazing card. And stay tuned in the coming days for my uh, post-fight show. And until then, see ya. Oh, hey, oh, yeah. And uh, almost forgot, an American car wash in Palm Desert, California did a great job washing my car. So I got to do a shout out to them and uh, thank them for that. I told them I would do a shout out to them on my show. And yep, uh, so... Um, yeah, here I am, uh, and, uh, and, uh, till then, um, so yeah, and stay tuned in the coming days for my next episode, until then, see ya.